And joining us now is David Miliband, President and CEO of the International Rescue Committee. And David, I, I've learned that two of your colleagues were killed in northwest Syria. I want to extend my condolences to you, to the organization which does such magnificent work around the world. Um, the death thanks, toll from the earthquake yeah. is yeah. indeed staggering. Yeah, thanks. That's meaningful to us. Two of our 430 colleagues, we have a team of over 400 in northwest Syria, as well as in uh, Turkey, in the southeast of Turkey, in southwest of Turkey, uh, in Gaziantep. And like every part of the northwest Syrian community, the southwestern Turkey communities, we have been touched by this crisis. I think the critical point to make is that the crisis that you've described and that Gabe Gutierrez has described, the earthquake crisis, is piled upon 10, 11, 12 years of agony for the people of Syria, both those who are trapped in the northwest of the country under the control of armed opposition groups and those who are refugees, three plus million of them, in Turkey. So this is a double crisis. And it's a very good reminder that when the world moves on from a crisis like Syria and, and leaves it as a forgotten crisis, that doesn't mean it's resolved. And what we're seeing is, yes, the impact of a natural disaster, but it's the compound on a political disaster as well. And I've been to that area in the Northwest with our UN ambassador, Linda Thomas-Greenfield, and uh, the infrastructure there is almost non-existent. These are thousands and thousands of people uh, literally starving at times, not getting as much aid as they need, despite the wonderful efforts of the UN and other groups, and living in tents. Well, yes, you're absolutely right. And of course, dependent in the Northwest of Syria, four million of them, on the crossing point that the UN are allowed to use. There are other commercial crossing points, but as a result of the Russian veto at the UN two years ago, we're down from two humanitarian official UN crossing points to one. And for part of Monday and Tuesday, that UN crossing point, the UN is the largest aid provider in the northwest of Syria uh, and helps support NGOs like mine, it was closed because of the earthquake. So you can see that this is a very, very challenging situation where the politics is riddled through the natural disaster. I was at that cross crossing point, in fact, with the UN ambassador. What obstacles are you now facing? Is the crossing point reopened? And is yes, the aid getting in? The, the, the crossing has reopened, uh, and there's a UN convoy of six uh, trucks going through uh, today. Uh, the vital need for all manner of humanitarian supplies, I'm afraid health facilities, health medications, but also body bags, you're talking about the full range of basics here. And I think it's really important that your viewers understand the danger of a secondary disaster, what the World Health Organization call a secondary disaster. The first disaster was the earthquake. The second now, as we uh, reduce, as the number of people who might have survived the earthquake reduces, the threat of the cold, the disease, the freezing conditions, that's a second threat. And that makes survival success. That's what the issue is over the next hours and days, is to simply survive. And that's what our team are trying to do. Our team, our clients, really, uh, and our teams, that they're in the same boat. And that's the problem that they're facing at the moment. But also, I just want to point out that uh, Jose Andres and World Central Kitchen are there, that there is, you know, that there is aid going. But can Americans do more? We'll put that up online. Great. If they can. I mean, we are really looking for an outpouring of human support, because I promise that our teams on the ground are ready to work on this. And they're, 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 they're overcoming the grief. Uh, they're reaching out with health and hygiene supplies. They're doing cash distribution. Uh, which we're able to deliver direct into people's hands. And it's vital that we save as many lives as possible in the weeks ahead. David Miliband, again, our condolences and thank you from everyone's, the bottom of everyone's heart for what you people do. Thanks, Thanks very much indeed.